This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to go back to BCC's Title Studio. Now, Title Studio is a great titling application, but there are some great cool hidden features, some under the hood features that you might not be aware of that are really going to exponentially speed up your workflow. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you an example of a classic title treatment that you might create and how you're going to be able to update it literally faster than you've ever been able to do before. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to apply Title Studio to its own layer. Now, why would I want to go about doing that? Well, this is something that's important to keep in mind is that if you start applying effects like Title Studio or like extruded text or other elements or effects like that to specific clips, you're then going to be limited to the length of the clip for you to do your animation. Whereas I'd rather have the flexibility of having it on its own layer so we can make the animation as long as we want it to be. Okay, let's call up the effects palette, Command or Control and 8 on the keyboard. We're going to head to BCC's 3D objects to the Title Studio effect. I'm going to take that effect and we're going to drag it and drop it down onto video track number 2. You'll see that the default title has now appeared and let's step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. You can always find it right here at the top of the timeline as well. And over inside the effects editor, we want to launch the Title Studio user interface. So I'm just going to click on that button. And we now have the Title Studio user interface at our disposal. Now, we don't want to be working with this default 3D title. So I'm just going to remove it. And we're going to head on over to the Create New Media dropdown. And I'm just going to select some new flat text. Now, before we get rolling, there is one parameter that I want to point out that would be helpful if you were to set before we get rolling so that you don't get a different result from what we're going to have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the edit dropdown. I'm going to come to the project settings and the parameter that I'm talking about is the hold parameter values option. If you don't set that before you get rolling, what's going to happen is once we start making adjustments to this first keyframe, that's going to obviously trickle down to the end keyframe down here and you're going to get a bit of an animation happening when you don't necessarily want one to happen. Okay, so with that option selected, I'm simply going to say okay and let's now come to our text window and I'm just going to change the Boris effects text to starring. Since we're creating a basic credit sequence here, we'll put starring. I'm going to adjust its point size to be somewhere up about 45 and let's position that at the top, roughly in the middle of the screen, kind of like that. Perfect. Okay, now instead of creating a new text layer, much like we had done before, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select this text and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, now with that track duplicated, let's reposition our new text down here to the lower, sort of lower left hand quadrant. And I'm going to change the starring text to be, why don't we just put my name in here? Okay. And once I have my name there, what I want to do is just shrink it down a little bit. We'll put it at 35 point size. Okay, let's make sure we actually have the text selected before we do that. 35, there we go, perfect. Okay, now I also want to have this text be about five seconds long. So let's just drag our end of our shot right back to five seconds here, perfect. Now, something that's important for me to point out before we move on, I've just taken this, I've dragged it back, okay, to be at five seconds. If I was to come in and start making parameter adjustments now, what's actually going to happen is the parameters are going to be adjusted on this keyframe that I have selected down here at the end of the shot. So I'm simply going to click on the shot itself to remove the selection of that keyframe. 
Okay, so let's just do a basic, basic animation here. It's just going to be a simple opacity change. We're going to come down to about the second mark here. And once I take the opacity and I make an adjustment to it, you'll notice that a keyframe has now been added and a keyframe interpolation of linear has been applied to it, which I am totally 100% good with. Okay, and let's have this fade out now to the end. There we go. And so we got a basic fade up, fade down. Very cool. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay. Now I hit command or control and D on the keyboard. You can always use the shortcut if you want by right clicking and saying duplicate track as well. So let's just take this name. And even though I can't see it, I don't need to worry about that. We're just going to reposition it up here in the upper right hand quadrant. You'll see that if I come down, I now have two names that are the same, but that's okay. We're going to change that. And let's put this second name as being Bruce Wayne. Okay, very cool. Now, we obviously don't want to have these two titles on top of each other. We want to have them transitioning in and out of each other. So basically one title will fade up and as it fades out, the next one will appear. And we're going to do the next one exactly the same. I'm only going to put four titles in here because I don't need to have too much going on here. Okay. And let's with this next title, I'm actually just going to position that. Let's put this in the lower, or let's put it in the upper left hand quadrant. We'll put it right about there. Okay, perfect. And Bruce Wayne is no longer Bruce Wayne. He's now Steve Raw, Steve Rogers. Okay. And Steve Rogers is again in the upper left hand corner. And then we're going to go back to the lower right hand corner. And you can see sort of our progression of our titles. Okay. And to be honest, it really didn't take me that long to whip this up here. Okay, let's take Steve Rogers. We're going to place him in the lower right hand corner. And his new name is now going to become. Actually, now this is a perfect example of why you didn't want to do that because an animation has been added for position. So let's just come back to the beginning here and see that was the exact reason that we wanted to make sure that we were at the beginning so that hold parameter value would be there. So this way it'll just fade up and not move. Okay, I'm actually kind of glad that I did that so that you could see exactly what would happen in that situation. Okay, and our last character's name is going to be Tony, make sure we actually spell that right, Tony Stark. Okay, so here is our animation. Again, nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. Okay, and what I'd like to now do is send this back to Media Composer. Okay, I'm simply going to say apply, and you'll now see that we have this animation in our timeline. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a template out of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back to effects mode and I'm going to come over here to the preset drop down and we're going to save this as a preset. Now you'll see that I can choose a category to put this in, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own folder and I'm going to call this Kevin's title presets. Okay. And I'm going to say create and in there, I'm going to call this basic credit sequence. Okay. And I'm going to say save. Now I'm really happy with the way that this has turned out. And what's going to happen is that I'd like to use this in upcoming productions. But you probably know where I'm going to be going with this. What's going to happen is that I need to make a change. And I need to change some of these names. Okay. So there's Kevin P. McAuliffe. And I don't want it to be Kevin P. McAuliffe anymore. I'd now like it to be Tim Johnson. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the Launch Title Studio UI. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select that name. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to type in Tim Johnson. I'm now going to come over. I'm going to say apply. That's going to be applied to my timeline. I wish there was a much easier way to do this. Well, there is. Now, whether I do this as a template or whether I do this on the actual title, the technique works the same. So what I'm going to do to change this name is instead of going back into the title studio user interface, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back into effects mode and I'm going to head into the FX browser. Now you'll notice that I'm parked on this title right now, the title that I was working on. You'll also notice down here that the names that I have in the actual credit sequence are represented down here as well. Now you'll notice that what's happened is, is that the FX browser 
has stacked the text. And if I come over here to advanced mode, you'll see I got Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and Bruce Wayne. If I come into the advanced mode and head back into the Title Studio UI, you'll see that I over here have Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, and Bruce Wayne. So if I got in and adjusted this and put this in the proper order, put starring and then had the names in the order that I wanted them, when I head back to the FX browser, those names will actually be in the proper stacking order. They're actually following the stacking order now, but it's just in reverse order because as I was creating it, it was adding it up as I went, okay? But if I wanted to make a change to any one of these, you know, Tim Johnson's not the name that I want to go with. That really should be Kevin P. McAuliffe. What's going to happen is that when I say insert text, my name's immediately going to be swapped out. I can now come down and say apply, and my name is now immediately dropped into the timeline. So where was I going with the creating a title template? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this from the timeline. I'm going to head back to Title Studio. I'm going to drag and drop the effect back down onto my timeline. What I'm now going to do is step back into effects mode. And instead of going back into the Title Studio user interface, I'm going to come in and I'm going to load a preset. Now I can do it from here. Or what I can do is I can come in and I can show the FX browser. Now, once the title presets have populated themselves, what you could do is you could come in and you could scroll down and find the title that you had created, except for one problem. To be honest, I don't remember what I called the title. So how am I going to get in and find it through all of the different titles in here without having to click through each one or ones that look similar to try to find it? Well, no problem. You'll remember that I created a new category called, appropriately enough, Kevin's Title Presets. All I have to do is come over here to the left, select Kevin's Title Presets, and I'll now be shown only the titles that are inside of that folder, which in this case is my basic credit sequence, which if I select it and I come down to my name, which comes up first, maybe I'm going to change that name to be Boris Effects. And once I say insert text, and I apply this into my timeline, that title has now been immediately applied to my timeline. And of course, if I want to get in and alter any one of these titles, I can simply step back into the FX browser and do it literally faster than I've ever been able to do it before. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you how working inside of Title Studio in conjunction with the FX browser can make getting in and updating complex title sequences super quick and super simple. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, Again, using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library. Again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.